Hello, everyone. Welcome to the serial lectures on traditional Chinese culture. Today, we will take up the subject of ancient Chinese architecture. For most visitors to China, sightseeing means a daily encounter with Chinese architecture of one type or another, ranging from temples through gardens, pagodas, mausoleums, imperial palaces to residential houses. Here we can see the residential house with a stone meal in the courtyard and the white pagoda of Lamaism. Chinese architecture is one of the three greatest construction systems in the world, together with European architecture and Islamic architecture. Here is Louvre in Paris, the representative building of European architecture. It is the world's largest art museum. Dome of the Rock is the representative building of Islamic architecture. It is a brilliant mosque in Jerusalem. Forbidden City is the Imperial Palace in Beijing. And the quadrangle features a courtyard surrounded by houses. Shall we probe into the history of ancient Chinese architecture? From Stone Age to Han Dynasty is the period of formation. Wei, Jing, Southern and Northern Dynasties are the period of development. Sui and Tang dynasties are the period of maturity. Song dynasty is the period of change. Yuan dynasty is the period of development. Ming and Qing dynasties are the last heyday. From Stone Age to Han Dynasty is the period of formation. Our ancestors sheltered in trees, natural caves, and earthen holes in the Paleolithic Age, or Old Stone Age. Simple cave-style houses or half-cave-style houses were built with wood, mud, and grass in Neolithic Age or the New Stone Age. The Great Wall and Emperor Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum were built in the Qin Dynasty. At that time, people built wooden structure as well as a stone structure. Later, wooden structure became the mainstream. The Great Wall was first built in the Qin Dynasty to protect the empire against various nomadic groups in the north. The most well-known sections of the wall now were built in the Ming Dynasty. The Great Wall of the Qin Dynasty was built of mud, while that of the Ming Dynasty was built of brick. The Great Wall is undulating imposing and majestic, climbing up and down along the ridge. Wei, Jing, 
Southern and Northern dynasties are the period of development. Buddhism developed quickly. Many pagodas, temples, and grottoes were built. Pagodas are as much a part of Chinese scenery as churches are in England. Tall or low, massive or slender, pagodas dot China's landscape as evidence of Buddhist influence on Chinese culture. The pagodas are mostly built of wood or brick. Songyue Temple Pagoda was the oldest existing pagoda in China, built of brick, in 520 in Dengfeng, Henan Province. It was the pagoda with dense eaves not mountable, the first floor being the highlight. Sui and the Tang dynasties are the period of maturity. The buildings look solemn, grave, simple and plain, featuring gentle and outstretched slopes deep eaves, big cobble and a bracket under the eaves, thick pillars, wooden door, and a straight window lattice. Here we can appreciate the main hall of Nan Chan Temple in Mount Wutai, Shanxi Province. Wooden structures are very difficult to preserve. This is the genuine building left over from the Tang Dynasty. Thus, the hall was extremely precious. Song Dynasty is the period of change. The architectural style was mild and soft. Buildings were smaller, yet beautiful and brilliant, featuring steep slope, shallow eaves, and a diamond window lattice. The eaves are not so deep, unlike those of the Tang Dynasty. The Hall of Goddess of Jingzi Temple in Taiyuan is soft and delicate. The pillars are intertwined with coiling dragons. Yuan Dynasty is the period of development. Pillars were reduced. Natural curved timber was used. Yongle Palace in Ruichen City, Shanxi Province, is famous for its Taoist mural, just as Dunhuang is renowned for its Buddhist fresco. Ming and Qing dynasties are the last heyday. The buildings are brilliant and splendid. The roofs are covered with glazed tiles. The eaves are upturned and high-rising, but not deep, with reduced cobble and bracket. The Forbidden City served as the home of emperors and their households and the political center for almost 500 years. Now, shall we move on to the characteristics of Chinese buildings? The unmistakable features of Chinese buildings include 
timber structure, such as wooden beams, columns, doors, and windows. North, south, central axis, hidden in the enclosed courtyard complex. Massive curved roof, terrace structure, cobble and bracket. Exquisite decoration, like colorful painting and decorative sculpture. Shall we begin with timber structure, the extensive and predominant use of timber as a building material in addition to bricks and tiles? What are the advantages and disadvantages of timber structure? The advantages are evident. Timber is easily available, transportable, practical, and sustainable. The parts are linked by mortise and tenon joints, being quick resistant. Mortise is the square hole, while tenon is the square block. By inserting tenon into mortise, the building could be constructed without the use of a single nail. The vertical pillar and the cross beam form the wooden framework. This framework bears all the weight of the building rather than the walls. There is a unique and quaint phenomenon. A house still stands even if its walls collapse. Wood could be carved for decoration and embellishment. Many tourists are impressed by the elaborate decorations and embellishments in the wooden buildings. Every coin has two sides. There are also disadvantages. The durability is not so good as stone structure. Wooden structure can be burned down by fire. The ancient Greeks usually built stone structures, which could be well preserved. Many people would like to visit the Acropolis in Athens to have a look at the temples of Parthenon, Athena Nike, and Eric theme with goddess columns and the Pantheon and the Colosseum in Rome. Wood grows very slowly and cannot be cut on a large scale recklessly. We mustn't break the ecological balance. Timber structure has three types, post and lintel construction, column and tie construction, log cabin construction. Post and lintel construction with a terrace is the official style used in magnificent buildings popular in the north. The vertical pillar and cross beam form the wooden framework. This framework bears all the weight of the building rather than the walls. Thus, a house still stands even if its walls collapse. Column and a tie construction is the folk style used in smaller buildings popular in the south. There are no cross beams 
only vertical pillars. The columns are densely laid out, connected by ties. The pillars directly bear the weight of the building. Thus, many vertical columns bear the heavy load. Log cabin construction is not widely used. The rectangular wooden framework is timber consuming, thus applied only in forest region. Enclosed courtyard complex along north-south central axis is the feature in layout. In a western property, the building is typically surrounded by an open yard. In contrast, building complex in China takes up the entire property and encloses open spaces within itself. These enclosed spaces come in two forms, open courtyard and the sky well. The complex is built along a north-south central axis, being symmetrical and hierarchical. Buildings with doors facing the front are considered more important than those facing the sides. The enclosed small space is formed by roof slopes, appropriately named sky well. Is it similar to a well? Here is the grand courtyard of family Qiao in Qixian County, Shanxi Province. The open courtyard and the residential house are symmetrical along the central axis. The red lanterns are hanging high. The open courtyard is best exemplified in quadrangle, known as Si He Yuan which consists of an empty space surrounded by buildings connected with one another either directly or through verandas. North-South Central Axis is the cardinal feature. Here we can see Si He Yuan and the Forbidden City built along the central axis, symmetrical and hierarchical. Can you find the central axis? The architectural layout of the Temple of Heaven is symmetrical and hierarchical. The Hall of Prayer for Good Harvest was built on the central axis. The massive curved roof has both practical and aesthetic value. The practical function of upturned roofs is to ensure enough light and make it easier to carry off rainwater. It also has aesthetic value. The upturned roofs lend an air of weightlessness to the massive buildings, achieving the illusion of floaty. The roofs seem to be floaty. When you are standing in front of an ancient building, you may wonder, when was it constructed? Sometimes you can make the judgment 
just according to the eaves. If the eaves are gentle, outstretching, and graceful, the building was constructed in the Tang Dynasty. If the eaves are slightly upturned, the building was constructed in the Song Dynasty. If the eaves are high rising, the building was constructed in the Ming and the Qing dynasties. In some, the eaves are becoming more and more upturned. That is the general tendency. Additionally, the roofs of imperial palaces are covered with yellow glazed tiles. As the emperor's color was yellow, the temple of heaven is appropriately covered with blue tiles, the color of the sky. There are mythological ornamental beasts atop roof ridges. Chi Wen is the mythological beast. One of the nine sons of the dragon. It can quench fire. We can frequently see Chi Wen swallowing the main ridge. Atop the sloping ridge of the Hall of Supreme Harmony, the mythological beasts. Are led by an immortal riding a phoenix. We can see a maximum of eleven mythological beasts. There are varied roof styles. In terms of hierarchy, hip roof ranks the first. Then, from high to low. Gable and hip roof, pavilion roof, overhanging gable roof, and flush gable roof. Besides, there are also helmet roof, flap top, and round ridge roof or rolling canopy. Double eaves. Rank higher than single eave. Hip roof ranks the first. The hall has five ridges: one main ridge, four diagonal or oblique ridges, and four slopes, with no gable. Or mountain-shaped wall. The Hall of Supreme Harmony in the Forbidden City ranks the highest with double eaves. Gable and hip roof is rather popular. The hall has nine ridges, one main ridge. Four vertical ridges and four diagonal ridges. Gable refers to the mountain-shaped triangular wall on both sides. Gable and hip roof is widely used. Here is the gate of Supreme Harmony in the Forbidden City with double eaves. Pavilion roof with a pinnacle or peak on the top is mostly used in pavilions. It is varied in style: round, triangular, square, pentagonal, hexagonal, octagonal, and helmet-shaped. The Hall of Prayer for Good Harvest 
in the temple of heaven has a three-layered round roof appropriately covered with blue tiles the color of the sky. The pavilion roof has various styles. The roof can be square, hexagonal, octagonal, or helmet-shaped, or with a pinnacle or peak on the top. Here we can see the three great halls of harmony in the Forbidden City, with imposing and hierarchical roof styles. In terms of hierarchy, hip roof for the Hall of Supreme Harmony, gable and hip roof for the Hall of Preserving Harmony, and a pavilion roof for the Hall of Central Harmony. Overhanging gable roof has one main ridge, four vertical ridges, and two slopes. The roof is protruding, overhanging, and projecting out of the gable. The roof is bigger. The representative is Shuangling Temple in Pingyao, Shanxi Province. Flush gable roof has one main ridge, four vertical ridges, and two slopes. The roof is level with the gable. Flush gable roof is low ranking in style, mostly used in folk residence. The representative is Chongzheng Hall in Shenyang Imperial Palace. Round ridge roof is mostly used in classical garden, like rolling canopy. The main ridge is not evident. Wen Chang Hall in Summer Palace has round ridge roof in combination with overhanging gable roof. It can also be used in combination with gable and hip roof or flush gable roof. Buildings in China invariably rise from a terrace. The wooden frame has to be protected from any ingress of water. There are four types, ordinary terrace, high-ranking terrace, higher-ranking terrace, and highest-ranking terrace. The terrace of the three great halls in the Forbidden City ranks the highest. There is a huge marble ramp behind the Hall of Preserving Harmony with intertwining dragons and clouds carved in relief, 200 tons in weight. The stone was quarried in the mountains more than 50 kilometers away from Beijing. People moved this gigantic stone to Beijing by sliding it over a specially paved ice road in winter to provide enough water to build the ice road Wells were dug at every 500 meters along the way. It took nearly one month to drag the huge stone to the Forbidden City. The massive curved roof and the terrace are symbols of heaven and earth. There is the saying, Heaven 
covers and earth carries. The terrace represents the earth, and the roof symbolizes the heaven. Thus, we come to the recurrent theme of ancient Chinese philosophy: a complete harmony between man and nature. Heaven, earth, and man are the three greats. Here is the hall of great achievements in Confucius Temple of Qufu, Shandong Province. Cobbles and brackets can be found under the eaves, used to support the roof. They are interlocked, visually intriguing, complex, and artistic. They give a clue to the social status of the owner. Ordinary people were not permitted to have them. They are the prerogative of people of rank. The decoration is exquisite, falling into two types: colorful paintings and decorative sculptures. Here is the long corridor in Summer Palace, famous for colorful paintings. Colorful painting plays a protective, decorative, and symbolic role to protect from worms, insects, and erosion. There are three styles of colorful painting: colorful painting with dragon and phoenix pattern ranks the highest. Mostly painted on imperial palaces, colorful painting with tangent circle pattern ranks the second. It is widely used, featuring whirling floral pattern. Colorful painting in Suzhou style, close wrapped bundle. Is mainly used in classical gardens. The semi-circular decorative painting looks like the bundle wrapped in cloth. A classic example is the colorful painting in the long corridor in Summer Palace. The semi-circular decorative painting looks like the bundle wrapped in cloth, known as Suzhou-style bundle, depicting landscape, flower and bird, historical stories, myths and legends. Each painting tells a story. Decorative sculptures range from brick carving on walls, stone sculptures on balustrades or railings, to mythological beasts atop roof ridge, men and beasts in front of a mausoleum, horse stepping on hung. Is the stone carving in the tomb of Huo Qubing, a famous general of the Western Han Dynasty? Han was the nomadic nationality in the north. Marco Polo Bridge or Lu Gou Bridge is an ancient stone bridge. There are about five hundred lines. Carved on the balusters of the bridge, with different gestures and expressions. Feng shui, literally meaning wind and water, is similar to geomancy, the divination according to geographic features. 
feng shui and Taoist elements can also be found in architecture. Screen walls are set up at the entrance to keep evil spirits away, which stems from the belief that evil spirits travel in straight lines. Zigzag bridges are built on water. Vulgar legend says that walking in a zigzag way will not be dragged into water by the drowning ghosts. As the drowning ghosts walk in a straight way, Ponds, pools, wells, and other water sources are often built into the structure. Door guards can ward off evil spirits and usher in good fortune. There are also symbolic patterns such as bats and pomegranates symbolizing good fortune and fertility, respectively. Bat and fortune are homophone. Pomegranate has a lot of seeds being fertile. Now, shall we move on to the classification of Chinese buildings? Chinese architecture falls into various types, ranging from imperial palace through classic garden, altar and temple, religious building, tomb and mausoleum, to residential house. Shall we begin with imperial palace? Imperial Palace is a veritable city, often called Palace City. It is strictly laid out along a central axis, with yellow glazed roof tiles, red walls and wooden columns, dragon being heavily used closely related to imperial authority, also for the entertainment of rulers. The Forbidden City in Beijing stands intact, being one of the greatest palaces of the world. Imperial Palace in Shenyang is still extinct. The Forbidden City best exemplifies the artistic features of palace architecture and can be called a masterpiece. The panorama here shows general layout of the Imperial Palace. The general layout is symmetrical and hierarchical along the central axis, with temple of imperial ancestors to the left front and altar for land and grain to the right front. Originally, there were five gates. However, the outmost gate has been demolished. Now, there are only four gates leading to the palace city. Tiananmen Gate, Gate of Correct Demeanor, Meridian Gate, and a Gate of Supreme Harmony. The outer court is located in the front. The living accommodations of the imperial family are found at the back known as Inner Palace. Imposing buildings stand well spaced along the central axis. Facing south and rising from a terrace, 
These buildings represent the supreme power and authority emperors enjoyed during feudalistic dynasties. Clustered around the great halls are numerous smaller buildings where the eunuchs and the concubines were locked in struggle for power and influence. The three great halls of harmony in the outer court include Hall of Supreme Harmony, Hall of Central Harmony, and Hall of Preserving Harmony. The outer court is located in the front. The inner palace in the back serves as living quarters, including the three imposing halls, Palace of Heavenly Purity, Hall of Union, and the Palace of Earthly Tranquility. Emperor used to live in the Palace of Heavenly Purity while empress lived in the palace of earthly tranquility. Now shall we appreciate the furnishings inside the Hall of Supreme Harmony? Looking up, we can see the caisson or coffer carved with a coiling dragon. It is located on the ceiling, just above the dragon throne. However, why is it called a well? In the five elements, water can quench fire. The Xuan Yuan mirror is used to ward off evil spirits. Legend goes that it can distinguish between true and false Son of Heaven. Flanking the dragon's room, we can see a pair of elephants, each with a bottle on the back. It is the auspicious pattern of peas and a bumper harvest. Elephant enjoying longevity and a treasure bottle holding holy water. Peace and bottle are homophobe. Elephant in China is auspicious and peaceful. White elephant is a brand of Chinese battery of very good quality. However, the battery did not sell well in the West because white elephant in the West is symbolic of being useless, burdensome, and somewhat stupid. Legend goes that an emperor gave a white elephant to a minister. The minister had to feed it and he became poor because the, the white elephant had a huge appetite. There are also displays in the outdoors. In front of the Tiananmen rostrum, we can see a pair of ornamental pillars, each with a beast squatting on the top, really imposing. There is a pair of stone lines in front of the gate of supreme harmony, imposing and majestic. Can you distinguish between the male and the female? Suppose you are standing in between the two lines. The male line is put on the left, playing with the ball, the universe, while the female line is put on the right, foundering 
or stroking a baby line. Sundial is the ancient clock. The shadow of the needle can tell the time. Grain measure is a set of standard implements measuring capacity of grain, symbolizing unity and prosperity. The auspicious vat is full of water. The water is used to quench fire, to extinguish fire. There is so much water, like a vast expanse of sea. In winter, the vat wall close to keep warm, actually to keep the water from freezing. The incense burner is used to burn incense. It is in the shape of a tripod. The bronze tortoise has a dragon head, symbolizing longevity. The bronze crane is stretching its neck, symbolizing longevity. The imperial palace in Shenyang is still extant. Here we can see the general layout with three routes. In the eastern route, we can find the Da Zheng Ho flanked by 10 pavilions on both sides. In the middle route, we can find the Chongzheng Ho. In the western route, we can find the Wensu Pavilion, the depository of books. Da Zheng Ho in the eastern route is an octagonal pavilion with splendid and brilliant glazed tiles. Chongzheng Ho in the middle route is the throne room, yet featuring flush gable roof. Wensu pavilion in the western route is the depository of books storing the complete library of four branches of learning, the imperial collection of four divisions of Confucian classics, historical records, philosophical writings, and miscellaneous literature. Here we can see the grain measure and auspicious vet in Shenyang Imperial Palace. Classical garden falls into four types. Grand Imperial Gardens in the north. Delicate private gardens in the south. Tranquil temple gardens and the picturesque landscape gardens. Here we can see the pavilion of surgeon waves in Suzhou and summer palace in Beijing. Altar and a temple are concerned with Confucianism. Here we can get a bird's eye view of the Temple of Heaven along the central axis. Altar and a temple are concerned with Confucianism. People practice three sacrificial rites in Confucianism. Worshipping Heaven 
and Earth is to pay tribute to universal life. There is the saying, "Round heaven and square earth." Temple of Heaven is located in the south of Beijing. Emperors used to worship the heaven in winter solstice. The altar is round. Temple of Earth is located in the south of Beijing. Emperors used to worship the Earth in summer solstice. The altar is square. Temple of Sun is located in the east of Beijing. Emperors used to worship the sun in spring equinox. Temple of Moon is located in the west of Beijing. Emperors would like to worship the moon in autumn equinox. Altar for land and grain is located to the right front of the Forbidden City. Worshiping ancestors is to express gratitude to clan life. However unsuccessful, mean, or vulgar a person was when he was alive, whenever he died, he became the ancestor and would be worshipped. People worship their ancestors at home in. Traditional festivals, at tombs in pure brightness, and also in ancestral temples. Emperors worship in the imperial ancestral temple to the left front of the Forbidden City. In traditional wedding, the newlyweds first. Worship the heaven and earth. Secondly, worship their parents, and thirdly, worship one another. The newlyweds would cow tow to their parents. Worshiping sages and men of virtue is to convey gratitude to cultural life. People built commemorative temples for dead people of great virtue. There are numerous Confucius temples in towns and countless temples of Guan Yu in the countryside. In Hangzhou, we can visit the temple of Yue Fei, a patriotic general. The Temple of Heaven is located in the south of Beijing. It is very large. The monarch was known as the Son of Heaven, so the Temple of Heaven must be larger than the Forbidden City. It is four times the size of Forbidden City. For the Son of Heaven to Carry out ritual ceremony of sacrifice on winter solstice. The emperor would express gratitude to heaven for the previous harvest and pray for the next bumper harvest. Here is the thirty-nine meter high. Hall of Prayer for Good Harvest. Constructed without the use of a single nail, the round hall has a three-tiered roof. Its tiles are painted deep blue, symbolizing the color of heaven. The roof is supported by twenty-eight. Pillars made of nanmu, representing twenty-eight constellations. 
the inner four massive pillars represent four seasons. The next twelve pillars represent twelve months. The outer twelve pillars represent the traditional division of the day, each comprising two hours. Order for land and grain is located to the right front of the Forbidden City. Here we can see the earth in five colors. The colored soil or mud. Green in the east. Red in the south. White in the west. Black in the north. And yellow in the middle. The five colors coincide with five elements, five directions, and five animals. Here is the sketch or diagram. The wood is green, and the green dragon is in the east. The fire is red, and Suzaku is in the south. Suzaku is the vermilion bird or red bird. The metal is white and the white tiger is in the west. The water is black and the basalt is in the north. Basalt refers to the turtle and the snake. The earth is yellow, and the lowest plateau is in the middle. Religious buildings are diversified, ranging from temples, monasteries, through mosques to churches. Buddhist constructions include Buddhist temples, monasteries, pagodas, and grottoes. Here is Lingying Monastery, or Monastery of Souls Retreat, in Hangzhou. The tower-shaped wooden pagoda is located in Yinxian County, Shanxi Province. It looked like a storied building, most imposing, and it is mountable. Here are the three pagodas in Dali, Yunnan province. The front one being Qianxun Pagoda. They are pagodas with dense eaves. The first floor being the highlight, and they are not mountable. Here is the White Pagoda in Beihai Park, Beijing, and the Shan Yin Ho before it. The pagoda is in the shape of an overturned arms bowl. These white pagodas are mostly pagodas of Lamaism. Here is Bai Yun Temple or White Cloud Temple in Beijing. It is a Taoist monastery. Taoist Temple is the holy hall where Taoists perform their religious ceremonies. Itka Mosque in Kashgar, Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, is the biggest mosque in China. It is a mosque in Arabian style. In the hall, there are no idols but an empty shrine pointing out the direction of Mecca. 
Ella is too perfect to be depicted. Ella is beyond description. Decorations on mosque are simply text of Quran in Arabic. Geometric pattern or floral pattern. Here we can see the four Islamic mosques in southeast coast. Lion Mosque in Guangzhou is the oldest existing mosque in China. Its formal name is Saint Cherishing Mosque. It has a unique minaret calling Muslims to pray. As we know, Muslims pray five times a day, at dawn, at noon, in the afternoon, at dusk, and at night. Unicorn Mosque is located in Quanzhou. Its formal name is Pure and Clean Mosque. It is a mosque in Arabian style. Cray Mosque is located in Yangzhou. Its layout is in the shape of cray. Phoenix Mosque is located in Hangzhou. Churches can also be found in China. Xu Jiahui Catholic Church in Shanghai is in Gothic style with two towers. St. Sophia Cathedral in Harbin is an Eastern Orthodox Church with onion-shaped dome. Shanghai Community Church is made of wood and red bricks, solemn and peaceful. It is a Protestant church. Now let's work on tombs and mausoleums. Over the centuries, people of all social classes had their tombs carefully built. The imperial tombs were imposing, majestic, and really artistic. Here is the tomb of the first emperor of China. Shall we probe into the history of tomb styles? In the Qin and Han dynasties, the mound is square on the top, looking like a pyramid, but the top is square. In the Tang Dynasty, real mountain is used as mausoleum. In the Song Dynasty, the mound is square on the top. The style is revived, yet smaller. In the Ming and the Qing dynasties, the domed mound is surrounded by circular or oval brickwork. In the Qing dynasty, the mound is surrounded mostly by oval wall. The terracotta warriors and horses were funerary objects buried with the dead. The tomb of the first emperor of China is located in Shanxi province. It is pyramidal. The mound is square on the top, planted with pomegranate trees. The mausoleum has not yet been excavated. The terracotta warriors and horses were life-sized, vivid, and true to life. They were found in the vicinity of the tomb of the first emperor. 
bronze chariots were also unearthed. They were funerary objects buried with the dead instead of real human beings. In the Tang Dynasty, real mountain is used as mausoleum. Qianling Tomb of the Empress of the Tang Dynasty is located in Shanxi Province. It is grand, imposing, and magnificent, using real mountain as mausoleum. Here is the secret road leading to the tomb in the highest northern peak. At the southern entrance, we can see two peaks flanking the secret road, safeguarding the mausoleum, looking like the breasts of a woman. Here is the stele with no inscription. Nothing is written about her contributions and mistakes. People can evaluate her merits by themselves. The stone statues of foreign envoys have no heads. They are saluting with hands folded looking humble and modest. In the Song Dynasty, the pyramidal mound is square on the top. The style is revived, yet smaller. Yongchang Tomb is located in Henan Province. It is the tomb of the first emperor of Song dynasty. The sacred path is flanked by stone sculptures, such as stone lions, tigers, and horses. The tomb looks somewhat plain and shabby. In the Ming and the Qing dynasties, the domed mound is surrounded by circular or oval brick wall. In the Qing dynasty, the mound is surrounded by mostly oval wall. Shall we pay a visit to the 13 tombs of the Ming dynasty in the outskirts of Beijing? The mausoleum has excellent feng shui or geomancy, flanked by Dragon Mountain in the east and the Tiger Mountain in the west, with Longevity Mountain Range in the north as the screen and open plain and the river in the front. Let's start from the stone archway through Great Palace Gate to Steely Pavilion along the Secret Road to Changling Tomb. The stone archway is the earliest and the biggest in China, with exquisitely carved dragons and unicorns. Here is the Great Palace Gate. Officials must get down from a horse when they come to the Great Palace Gate. They must dismount here. This is the Steely Pavilion, the giant turtle named Bi Xi is carrying a steely inside the pavilion. Bi Xi is one of the nine sons of the dragon. It can bear a heavy burden. It often carries steely or stone tablet on its back. It can bring good fortune. Nearby, there is an ornamental pillar.
Here is the secret path leading to the 13 tombs, flanked by camels, elephants, civil officials, and the military officers. Changling tomb is the biggest and the best preserved mausoleum here. It is the tomb of the third emperor of the Ming dynasty. The bird's eye view shows the layout of Changling tomb, beginning from tomb gate through Ling En gate, Ling En hall to square terrace and a soul tower. However, people prefer to call it bright tower rather than soul tower. Further back, the domed mound above the underground palace is surrounded by circular brick wall. We might as well take a close look at the tomb gate, Ling En Gate, Ling En Hall, and Square Terrace and Bright Tower. Now, shall we come to residential houses? Residential houses refer to the houses of common people in different parts of China with distinctive local styles. Residential houses fall into various types of courtyard house, stilted house or piled dwelling, cave dwelling, earthen building, yurt, flat roof block house, and Hui style residence. Here we can see earthen building in Fujian province and a yurt in Inner Mongolia. Shall we begin with courtyard house? Several buildings are disposed around a central courtyard best representing the traditional dwelling of Han people, greatest in number and most widely distributed, mostly in the north. The main hall is most important. Ancestral worship, wedding, funeral, as well as education all take place in the main hall, which is located at the rear end. All the blocks are symmetrical and have a north-south central axis. Family members live in different rooms according to hierarchy. Si he yuan is a typical style of Chinese courtyard house. Si he yuan is a historical residence commonly found throughout China, most famously in Beijing. The name literally means a courtyard surrounded by four buildings. In English, Si he yuan is sometimes referred to as Chinese quadrangles. Quadrangles can be divided into different styles, single yard, two yard, three yard, four yard, and five yard quadrangle. Composed symmetrically, these houses are usually located in north, facing south, in order to get more sunlight during winter. People believe that facing south will bring good feng shui. Feng shui is the geomantic omen. 
There are no windows or small windows on the outside walls around the house. The outside walls are used to keep warm, prevent from wind and sand, give privacy and protect from burglars. Inside walls is a protected environment. Women can move about freely without worrying about being observed by strangers. For men, the outer world can be a burden, while the space within the walls is something of a sanctuary. Thus, quadrangles are reserved and conservative. Stilted house, also known as piled dwelling, can be found in the south, mostly among minorities. The climate of these areas is humid, wet, and rainy. The houses are supported on wooden or bamboo stilts or piles in order to avoid flooding. And insects. Bamboo stilted house can be found in Yunnan province, built by people of Dai nationality. The roof is large and steep. It provides easy drainage and protection from the sun. Each house consists of one hall, one bedroom, a front porch, a drying deck on the podium, and supporting stilts on the lower level. All family members live in the same bedroom. The hall serves as kitchen, dining room, and guest room. There is a fireplace in the hall. The lower level is used to keep animals such as pigs and sheep. Partly stilted houses can be found in a mountainous area in the west of Hunan Province, at the foot of a hill or overlooking a river. Cave dwellings are mostly found in the thick lowest plateau. People live in caves instead of houses because of a lack of wood and much poverty. People cannot afford houses. The cave ceiling is dome shaped so that the loading of the soil above. Is transferred to the walls on both sides. The ceiling is usually three to five meters thick. If it is too thin, rainwater seeps through. If it is too thick, the cave may collapse as the soil on top becomes too heavy. There are two types of caves: cliffside caves and sunken courtyard-style caves. Cliffside caves are dug from the lowest cliffs. Sunken courtyard-style caves are built where there is no cliff. They are dug into an open pit with four walls. Forming a courtyard type of dwelling, those living in one pit belong to the same family. There are some advantages of living in the caves. The cave homes are constructed easily with simple and economical materials. These dwellings with thick wall and high ceilings are warm in winter and cool in summer, 
full of intimacy, and there is harmony between man and nature. However, there are also disadvantages of living in the caves. Cave humidity is high, lighting is inadequate, ventilation is poor. Besides, there is water seepage. Cave dwellings are often associated with poverty. Take a look at the interior of cave dwelling. There are many certificates of merit on the wall, and a heatable earthen bed is warm and cozy. Earthen building is a large, multi-story building in the mountainous region of Fujian Province for large community living and defects. A unique and outstanding architectural form. Most hackers lived with each other in the mountains. The houses are huge, built with ramped or compacted earth and wood frame. They can be ten meters tall and, and more than sixty meters in diameter. They are enclosed by very thick walls. Windows are usually very small. They look like fortified castles built to provide protection against invasion of bandits and wild animals. The living units are built along the inner walls in the same size and shape. Here is the typical layout of a round earthen building. The first floor is always the kitchen. The second floor becomes a storeroom for food and furniture. The third floor and above are bedrooms. The courtyard is located in the middle, while the ancestral hall is located at the center of the courtyard. Clan members, as many as three to five hundred people, live in this single house. Here, the round earthen building is laid out in eight trigrams, a unique composition. The Americans once suspected that it was the missile launch site. Does it resemble a missile launch site? Yurt is mainly found in Inner Mongolia. People set up and dismantle their houses from time to time because they need to move from place to place in search of new grassland. So the yurt is portable and suitable for nomadic life. They are round with a dome-shaped top, easy to set up and dismantle. The diameter of a tent is four to six meters. A wooden frame is made first, then covered over by leather. There are no partitions inside the tent. There is a fireplace in the middle for cooking and heating. On the floor are a piece of very thick leather pad and woolen blankets. There is a lack of building materials in the grassland. Leather is most easily available, thus the most suitable material to build the tent. On the roof is a round hole which is opened during the day for ventilation and closed at night to keep the tent warm. Flat roof block house can be found mainly in Tibet. There is little 
flat land in the plateau, so people built multi-story houses to create more living space. One building, usually two, three, or four stories, is occupied by one single household. The houses blend in with the contours of the mountain. They appear to be colorful, dazzling, and vigorous in the strong sunlight. The external walls are square, made of stone. The roofs are flat, so as to receive more sunlight and to provide more space for drying food. In a typical four-story block house, the lowest story is for keeping livestock. The second story is used as kitchen and storeroom to cook and store food and hay. The third story consists of living room and a bedroom. And the top story serves as drying deck and a worshiping hall. There is a fireplace in the kitchen. The worshiping hall is beautifully decorated. It is the most important part of the house since the Tibetans are devout Buddhists. Hui-style residence is mostly found in the south of Anhui province, featuring black tile and white wall, looking like an ink painting. The wall is in the shape of horse head. It is fireproofing, known as wind and fire wall. The building is exquisitely decorated. The high wall can avoid thieves. The patio is known as sky well. The movie Crouching Tiger and the Hidden Dragon was shot in the Hui style residence. The village looks like a landscape painting, poetic and picturesque. Thank you very much.